Hello Minions, Wheezy here and today we're going to talk about the best defensible positions in each map in Call of Duty Cold War so that you can have as much success as possible in free for all. Let's go take a look. So let's get right into it and start with Armada Strike. Um, Armada is interesting in that for free-for-all it has three locations that are great for defending and we're gonna start with what I feel is the most high traffic and most coveted position which is the middle of the map this wheelhouse that exists between uh, both opposing sides of the map and the reason that this is such a strong position is because all traffic throughout the map goes through here uh, with the exception of people who stick to either end which we will discuss um, everyone is fundamentally trying to usually get either up here to this the top of these two ladders or more likely coming uh, through the bottom and then bringing the stairs up so there are a fair number of people that will push the ladders but more often than not what you will find is people coming up the stairs through the center section so this is a very strong position to defend there's a lot of cover there is a lot of ability like there you see me kind of sprint slide because of the few lines of sight to further away um, are at the tops of the ladders they can see you from on the deck as well as the far side so those are good locations to be aware of people can shoot at you but it's also a good opportunity for you to be able to peek and kill people that are on the other side of the map so a big part of why this is so powerful in free-for-all isn't just because it's defensible because there's a lot of routes to cover but because it receives a lot of traffic and there's a lot of people so free-for-all is a combination of wanting to stay safe um, but more importantly you need to get those 30 kills to win the game so finding a good defensible position where five people come to you in the entire match isn't really going to help you win games so the most coveted position on this map is this center wheelhouse and you can patrol, patrol it like you see me doing um, and you can get some decent streaks together the second strongest position is this end of the ship um, so there are obviously two ends to the ship and this is the strongest of the two and also the most high traffic there are a decent number of spawns in this area uh, the people that spawn down on the deck as well as the people that actually spawn up in this back uh, back end of the of the boat so um, I'm sorry ship <laughs> so if uh, so the people who spawn down on the deck will either push up here to the closest cover they can find which is very common or they will push out to the middle deck which is where we uh, and the wheelhouse which is what we talked about first so this is a great defensible position you will get a decent amount of traffic here so you can actually set up in this end of the ship and have a decent streak on its own you don't necessarily have to push to the wheelhouse from this position in fact it's quite dangerous because there are lines of sight both from that upper deck as well as the windows as well as the covered room at the bottom of the stairs for there so this is a strong position it can be tough to get out of so if you find that you're over here and you're not getting a lot of traffic you will have to move <laughs> but uh, but it can be pretty strong on its own and the other end of the ship is the third position we'll cover this is also very defensible but you will find it has notably less traffic there are a couple of spawns over here and you have some okay lines of sight to the wheelhouse um, and the you know the upper deck over there but most likely you will probably not want to use this into the ship for more than a few kills because you won't get much traffic and it's not nearly as easily defensible so if you get a decent streak of three or four kills on this end of the map then I would suggest that you push towards the wheelhouse and the safest way to push uh, on on this end of the map is from where I'm standing right now push left through that container and then into the room at the bottom of the stairs to the wheelhouse so here you can already see that, that that's what I'm thinking about doing um, and it's just people spawning uh, around me and, and footsteps around me that keeps me over on this end of the ship but it can be a very excellent position to defend uh, but as a long-term strategy towards getting the 30 kills you need to win the game it's it's not the best and you will be better served by trying to push towards the wheelhouse from this end um, so the next uh, I was like that streaks in so we're gonna move on to cartel next now cartel is there's really only two positions that I like to defend in cartel and there's a whole lot of mid map that I would recommend you completely stay away from so um, 
we're going to start with this end of the map and I don't necessarily think this is particularly better than the other end of the map um, but we're going to start here now the reason the ends of the map on the, on cartel are so powerful is because it allows you to control your threat directions meaning people um, when you're patrolling this end of the map will spawn uh, either around you uh, in relatively predictable areas like the um, little shacks behind the fence or back there but if you're hanging around the back end of the map you can reasonably predict where people are going to spawn around you and you have lots of cover um, you're able to move from point to point without being in the open very long and you can hear people's footsteps very well uh, over here um, and you can see people will be moving towards mid map people tend to think that the strongest point on this map is um, the hut on the other end with the window that overlooks the field um, I don't agree with that because I think it's a I mean you can get a few kills in there and it's a and it's a decently defensible position with good cover but everyone will push that position so even if you hold it down for a few kills you will get rushed by everyone trying to get there so uh, this end of the map I think is an excellent option people don't necessarily anticipate someone patrolling over here and with the nature of free-for-all and the way people spawn kind of sporadically throughout the map a single person you kill won't necessarily spawn near you on this end of the map multiple times and so they'll spawn over here you'll kill them they're spawn they'll spawn somewhere else in the map they'll kind of forget that you were over here patrolling and then if they do spawn back on this side they're not necessarily gonna instantly try and hunt you down because um, they won't necessarily remember you were there so we're going to switch to the other end of the map which is the other defensible position and I will quickly say that as a rule <laughs> in uh, free for our and free for all in cartel is unless you absolutely have to unless there's just no traffic on the end where you are and everyone's just fighting elsewhere I would not try to cross the map the there are just too many lines of sight where you can get flanked from either side shot from a distance if you get to one of these ends if you spawn on one of these ends patrol it and hold it down and you will get a decent amount of kills and a decent streak without having to push out into the more dangerous parts of the map um, this creek bed is a good place to push down into because people again on this end of the map will be pushing up towards this shed up there to my left so if you stay away from that and kind of patrol the people that are trying to move towards it you will be able to pick them off typically looking the other direction you will oftentimes find people uh, pushing up towards that shed that you can just shoot in the back because that's the position they're trying to get to I may step into that uh, shed for a little bit every now and then depending on if that's kind of where traffic pushes me uh, but I definitely won't stay there long term and in fact um, because it's such a populous area I will sometimes yeah. use it to get two three kills and then I know people are going to be coming back and so then I will leap out the window and uh, then go back to watching people who are trying to push into it and get a couple more free kills with people trying to return to kill me there so um, one thing that you will notice as we go through these maps in general isn't just the locations that are defensible but the play style that defensible encompasses I don't mean finding a small area a corner to sit in I don't mean finding a room to put bouncing Bettys down to put claymores down and to try and survive in a tiny space when people are going to know exactly where you are and can take you out with a simtex or a frag when I say a defensible area I mean a an area a portion of the map uh, of decent enough size that you can patrol and move around that that will limit the direction that engagements will come from so part of an area being defensible and this is something that I will cover more uh, in some of my Wheezy's War College episodes uh, is being able to control threat directions so moving on to checkmate uh, this one is a little bit trickier um, which is to say that I guess it's not as tricky and, and it's not necessarily a rule on all these maps that the ends are the strongest it just turns out to be the case a lot of the time now in this map people will be split between pushing towards controlling the plane or absolutely avoiding the plane because the plane is a death trap so the first thing that I will say is regardless of where you think a defensible area is on this map stay away from the middle plane because it is a death trap you may get the high ground and you may get three or four kills but it will not be sustainable because everyone will have lines of sight to you and everyone will be pushing you um, this end of the map is quite strong because again you'll notice that some themes with these defensible areas there's plenty of cover you can move around the map and patrol 
while remaining in cover uh, and not putting yourself in the open very often. Being in the open in free-for-all, uh, especially sprinting through the open, is the surest way to get yourself killed. So finding areas that have a lot of cover relatively close near close by so that you can move from cover to cover without doing a lot of sprinting through the open is going to increase not just or it's not only going to decrease the amount of time people have an opportunity to shoot and kill you but since you're sprinting less and you're moving cover to cover uh, more tactically you will find that you are making less noise, you are attracting less attention, and you are more successful in being able to catch people unaware. Because, again, as we talked about in uh, Cartel, the same kind of concept applies in free-for-all. When you kill someone on one end of the map, usually the game will spawn them on the other end of the map. Unlike a domination or a team deathmatch, where you may get killed and you may get the same spawn four or five times in a row. In free-for-all, if you get killed, you will probably be spawned across the map. You may, the person that you killed may go on a decent streak over there, may get one or two kills. It may be a minute or two um, before they get spawned back anywhere near you. So even if you're still on a longer streak, they will likely have forgotten that you were over there patrolling as opposed to something like a domination or a team deathmatch when if you're in an area and you kill the same person a couple of times and they keep respawning in the same location, they're going to remember where you were, they're going to come straight back for you, and they're going to revenge kill you. So um, so having a defensible area like this is a good way to, uh, in free-for-all, avoid that, um, especially if you're not picking a single corner to sit in. So this clip is starting on the same end of the map, but you are going to notice that this is... The reason I included this is because this is actually... Um, one of the ways, that, well, basically the primary way I would recommend moving through this map if you get in an area where either um, you find that you're getting a lot of tension, people are coming back from you, uh, coming back to kill you because you've gotten a streak going on this end of the map, or maybe you're just not getting enough traffic. So um, there's a lot of cover on this side of the map to be able to move across if you want to push to the far side. I find that the far side of the map is not quite as, I'm not quite as successful over there. I find that there's just probably a little bit too too many angles where you can get surprised from on the far end uh, but you got to go where the people are and if you're on one end of the map and you're either getting too much pressure and they're threatening to kill you or you're not getting enough kills then uh, moving to the to where the people are moving to the far end of the map will be necessary and that is the route that I would recommend the other route has too many lines of sight to the plane as well as a longer line of sight across uh, from like the tail section to the far end so the route you saw me come across is the best way to move end to end in the map. That said, this end of the map can also be very defensible. There's a decent amount of cover, but like I said, there just it just feels like there's a little too much open space over here for me to really put together streaks regularly. On this map, when I have better streaks, I find that they tend to be on the other end of the map. Over here, people, especially where they're, they have access to that double building, as I'm gonna drive the RC car over here, when they have access to these rooms over here, because there's two doors that exit from there, they're able to take cover for you shooting them pretty easily as I get executed. <laughs> they're easy, easily able to take cover when you get shoot at them, and uh, it doesn't give you as much of an advantage. Crossroad Strike, this is one of my favorite free-for-all maps. Potentially, matter of fact, this is probably my favorite free-for-all map, and it's because of this position right here behind this rock. Um, now, this is a much smaller area to defend, and this is also a popular area for people to go on this map. It is a very strong position. You can basically cover this entire half of the map from behind this rock with good cover, and people will struggle to uh, predict which side of the map, which side of the rock you're peeking out from, which makes you harder to get. But that said, you will get pushed hard here, like you're seeing here. People are coming back for me because they know that I'm here. So another reason I like this position is because people will push to the rock so hard, uh, it gives you an opportunity to move away from the rock. And much like we talked about um, in, a previous, in the previous maps with people going back to a position so that you can kill them when they're trying to attack you, like the, the room on Cartel. Um, if you get a few kills behind this rock and you notice that people are starting to turn their attention towards you immediately, <laughs> then um, you can move. Uh, the way that I move is first over to this uh, little fenced-in corner here um, because as people push back towards 
the rock, you will be able to catch them from behind or typically looking at where you just were. Um, or you can even watch the longer line of sight down across the, uh, the, the down area. Um, this is another position that I actually really like, even though the streaks here don't tend to be as strong because you don't have as much cover to move. Um, but having these two containers gives you uh, a lot of unpredictability. They can't necessarily predict which part of the container you're gonna peek out from and it lets you cover a large part of the map. That said, if you get pushed and you get in trouble, there's not really anywhere for you to run uh, that's still within cover. So this is a good position that will get you a, a decent little streak going. Um, but it won't necessarily be uh, sustainable for the long haul. So it is uh, good if you get a break in the action to push up along uh, what would currently be my right hand side here um, towards kind of the sandbags uh, and the mid part of the map. If you start to find that you're being pressured, uh, that would be the way that I would move <clears throat> to get out of this location. And this, where I'm at right now, is the location that you would be moving towards from those containers, right? So there's a lot of cover up here as well. Um, not as strong a position because there's a lot of angles you can be attacked from, but it is still a, a good position to move to, especially if you've been pressured at the containers. So part of uh, free-for-all in addition to finding defensible areas is knowing um, the mind game part of it, knowing that if if you pick one place on the map that is your absolute favorite and you try to spend the whole game there, it eventually, you know, and not that long, people will figure out that that's your favorite spot and they will start coming to that place because you will then start becoming easy kills for them. So you need to be able to mix up all of these different locations and use them all interchangeably as you move through the match. So now we'll move on to Garrison. Garrison, I have surprisingly um, had quite a few streaks, even though I wouldn't necessarily say that this is one of my favorite maps, although it seems to be one of the ones that I am the most successful on <laughs> in free-for-all. Um, this uh, corner and really end of the map here uh, can be a very strong position. If you find yourself up here with a little bit of high ground around this container, again, it allows you to be unpredictable by peeking through either side, so people will have trouble anticipating where you're gonna stick your head out, which can give you the advantage um, if people spawn down here. But other than the risk of moving through the open across this middle space, the far garage is actually another good defensible position. So you can patrol, uh, I say patrol, Th this end of the map you can control pretty strongly. I wouldn't recommend moving back and forth regularly between this corner and the garage side because you have to move through the open to get there and I wouldn't recommend that. So you can be on either side of this end of the map and hold the area down pretty effectively. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend moving between the two very regularly. This other end of the map is also good, um, but I find there is also quite a few uh, angles that can be a little bit harder to predict, but especially if you kind of set up your headquarters in this, uh, in this back train car uh, corner, you will have a good advantage. You can branch out a little bit from there, but that's going to be kind of your home base because it allows you to basically control your engagements to coming from mainly two lines of sight. Um, as apparently I went on a joyride in my RCXD on this one and then got a kill when I popped back up. So this kind of back corner here is where you're going to uh, watch out from um, being up on that train car and looking over that wall can be a good spot, but don't hang out there too long. Peeking around the side of the corner can be a good way to get a surprise on someone who's expecting you to be on, to on top of the wall. Um, and then also moving around and using cover uh, on this half of the map in general is, is a good way to put a streak together as that guy was lost. <laughs> so um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend moving out of this side and you will notice from these two areas, I would not ever go through the center uh, the center building in free-for-all. I avoid it like the plague. If you do absolutely need to move end-to-end, -end, um, I would push through this left side, um, either on the far route on the outside of the building until you get into where that little upper room is on the far side of the bridge, and then move hugging the left side to the far end of the map. Um, less, I wouldn't even recommend going along this right side through that room and then across that big walkway. That is just too open. So if you need to move from one end of the map to the other, I would recommend the left side from my perspective in this clip. Um, but you can usually take one end of the map, the end of the map where you spawn or that you're closest to when you do spawn and, and hold it down. So 
that would be my suggestion for Garrison. Miami is a little bit of a of a of an interesting one. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of color and a lot of dynamics to it, but the two honestly, when it comes to Miami, there's one main position that I that I really like to be able to hold, and it is this end, especially centered around the you know the building. Now, this is very similar to kind of cartel in that the building here off to my right, um, which is what that visitor center is, uh, is actually a pretty coveted position. People will try and get there, but it's also an, because it's an extremely defensible position. Um, but it is also because it's an extremely defensible position. People want to be there. But if you get that position, then you will be able to defend it pretty effectively from people, especially if instead of just sitting in that one room with the big window, like a lot of people will, if you patrol the entire upper deck, including jumping out of the windows and walking around on the outside ledges, you will be able to defend that building really effectively. Um, and don't be afraid to hop down and be, again, unpredictable on the lower level around it. So this corner gives you um, a lot of cover and a lot of good lines of sight uh, to anyone moving around this end of the map. Although Miami, I find in general, is is interesting because it always seems to be a bit more of a low traffic map. I, I Maybe because there's so much cover in this map and so many nooks and crannies and places for people to hide. And because people do really like the window on the other side and kind of the hotel rooms part of it. Um, people can tend to bunch up over there. Um, which can be an advantage to this position as well because you will find people not, you know, trying to move to the other side of the map um, as opposed to hanging on this side of the map. So you can often find people running trying not to be where you are. So. Um, this building, and especially if you get a sentry gun, that window can be a really great place to put one. So defending this upper deck um, by using the windows and the outside ledges can can make you really unpredictable and make this a really strong position to protect. So I would, uh, even if I spawn on the far side, I will sometimes move up the beach end to try and get to this side just because I feel like this is a more dynamic and defensible position to hold in Miami. This next clip is um, more about moving around the map because other than the, the first area, I don't really find that there's a position so much or a area on Miami that you can otherwise defend. The hotel rooms are a bit high traffic and not super defendable. Um, this little room where I just was shooting at that guy, again, has quite a few angles that it can be attacked from and it's not quite as strong as you would think. So. This kind of covers using um, cover and uh, kind of being able to move through and explore the map in, in a safer way. And this may this this clip may actually explain kind of what I somewhat wondered earlier, which is why Miami seems a little bit low traffic. And that's because there are actually quite a few ways that you can simply just move around this entire half or two thirds of the map from cover to cover without being easily seen. So. Um, one of the big keys in free-for-all uh, is using cover and ha controlling your engagements. This this long line of sight can be very dangerous when people are guarding that room. People love to use the overlook room in the hotel up there, so this area can be dangerous. Um, this isn't necessarily the most uh, tactical of, of clips as far as a defensible area, but this will typically be the direction that you will that I will start moving if I spawn this into the map and I want to move over towards the visitor center. So even though I'm moving around and responding to footsteps I hear around me and trying to use cover to control those engagements, my ultimate mindset here is that I'm really trying to push towards a position that I like better than this end of the map. I always feel a little bit on the back foot over here, <clears throat> like I'm responding to threats instead of uh, controlling my engagements. I mean that shooting from a lower position on someone with half cover up high is not ideal so um, oftentimes when I'm over here, I will just kind of be <laughs> fighting for my life and, uh, and trying to move towards the beachside route so I can move over towards uh, the position that I prefer on this map, which is the visitor center uh, area. So let's move right on to Moscow as we're pushing through here. Um, Moscow is doesn't really have ends. <laughs> it, it plays a little bit more like a box or an extended rectangle. Um, but there are essentially kind of two caddy corners uh, that are okay. Um, I started with this clip, even though this actually in general probably isn't my favorite uh, position to defend in this map. Uh, but it does give you a lot of uh, 
opportunity to engage people from unexpected directions and a decent amount of area to move. So you can watch this back corner, move through here. <clears throat> this building that I'm standing in the door of right now is actually quite a uh, good place to use um, to move around and to be unpredictable because it's got a, a window uh, that you can escape towards this back corner. Two doors. There's also the window that leads toward the middle of the map, although I wouldn't recommend cool. using that much. Um, cool. I definitely don't sit in that room and look out that window for very long because those are the those are the positions that most people feel like are the strongest is those two opposing windows because you have a little bit of cover. People can come in one door behind you and you have this big window. But because that is such an obvious position, you will get a lot of traffic there. People, when they come through that area, will always check those windows and those doors because they will always expect someone to be there. So big part of controlling your engagements is being unexpected. And, and so it's one thing if someone sees you and knows that you're in an area or has been killed by you before and expects you to be there because they were they experienced you there before it is another thing and a unnecessary disadvantage to put on yourself to occupy a location where no one has seen you nobody knows that you're there but they will still be looking for you because they always expect people to be there so if you ever and this is just a more conceptual tip if there's ever a part of the map whenever you play it you're like there's always this place and i always see people there that doesn't mean it's a good position and that you want to be the person that's there. It means that everyone else thinks that that's a good position and that anyone who comes through the map is going to look to kill someone who's standing there. So you don't want to be in that position. You want to be in a location where you can kill all of the people who will move through that position. So you'll see here I'm in this window. This is one of the, the one of people's favorite positions on this map because it is relatively defensible, but because of that, you will get pushed hard, and I don't care how defensible a position is, if you're in free-for-all and half of the map is pushing your location, you're not gonna survive for very long. So you'll see that I'm, I'm not setting up base in there. Um, I am using it to maybe get a couple of kills or to catch a couple of people who are pushing there to try and get kills, um, but then I'm not hanging out, <laughs> I'm moving away. Um, this is the uh, other kind of Caddy corner, well, not where I am right now. Actually, it's um, more towards the that building over there and then the far side. That is, this is probably a more reliable corner of the map I found. It gives me more flexibility to move around and I find that it seems to feel a bit safer, uh, but it's also a, quite a bit lower traffic and so you will get less uh, less heat on this end. But using this building as kind of your base and your headquarters and especially not being in this building um, you can move through it for engagement purposes but i would recommend using it to engage people who are moving through it and using this outside route to kind of patrol this corner of the map this is this is the area that that i find is useful uh, over here now um now it's opposite of that far corner as you will notice um i just i guess I, it didn't really occur to me how close together those are from the first area. Um, but this is really uh, a good position to move through. There's a lot of traffic from the escalators, uh, that original corner that I talked about. So this is actually a good location that you could move to if you get several kills on the first position that I showed you uh, and it's starting to get hot and you need to move somewhere that is more unexpected. So this area can be better. Um, as you move this way towards that corner, you get even more well, even even more less traffic, even lower foot traffic on that side. So a lot of people will kind of, gra I say a lot of people, some people will gravitate towards that corner because it feels more defensible, but you will not get a lot of, a lot of action over there. And again, the idea of having a defensible position in free-for-all is to help you win the game. So having a defensible position that nobody comes near is not going to be very helpful uh, towards winning the game. So you can move through this kind of little pathway here if you want to get a good line of sight to people who may be moving to that corner or to look across towards buses. Um, but even this leaves you exposed to the right, exposed from behind. So I would use this tactically, be very aware of people moving around you, and then kind of return to base, move back towards that kind of home uh, building when you can. So obviously uh, audio and, and awareness of where people are is uh, a big part of free-for-all um, and being reactive, but uh, the idea of these locations is to give you controlled engagements as much as possible. On satellite, uh, this end is not super defensible. There's a lot of lines of sight here, but there's also decent cover and people will tend to be trying to move towards mid-map. Um, so 
this uh, is can be a very good position to defend. Um, mid map, and I will have a clip for that as well, is the other position um, that I recommend, but that is where pretty much everyone is going to be pushing. So if you're going to be mid map, things are gonna be hot and you're gonna to need to know what you're doing. So my next clip will show you how to defend mid map more effectively. That said, the reason this end of the map is effective is because people who spawn and come to this end will typically just be trying to leave to go to mid map. So you can patrol and hang out in this end of the map for most of the match and get a, a really good streak uh, going, get a really good score. Um, there's a lot, there's a decent amount of cover, a lot of places you can be unexpected. You can peek around tons of corners, uh, especially if you're paying attention to footsteps and you, and you are being mindful of where people are coming from. And if you're not just doing like everyone else is, as you can see, everyone's just basically push into mid map, you can do uh, a lot of work from over here. Um, you do need to be aware of snipers along this right hand side uh, and on the far side, but at the same time, because of the sand dunes and the rocks over here, you can actually also engage snipers pretty effectively from this corner. Like here you see, you know, that's kind of how you'll experience people is they'll get out there and, and try to snipe. The sand dunes are sniper paradise on satellite and this is a good position for you to be able to take them out if you're not using a sniper rifle so um, this is a strong area of the map to play so mid map mid map is good because you get high ground and visibility over most of the map but bad because there's a lot of places people can come from and and it can be hard to defend so if you want to hold down mid map which i would recommend if you're going for big streaks and a fast score mid map can get you a lot of action uh, but you have to be very careful and I would recommend sticking to primarily what you'll see here is this little uh, this far end this top corner uh, where I set my sentry gun and this first piece of fuselage Th going down further this way um, is where you're gonna start getting trouble down in this little goalie behind the satellite you'll find a lot of people trying to defend that but there are just too many angles where you can get taken out from so you'll see that I'm a little frantic when I'm down here because I know that is a that is a dangerous area to be. Um, and so I try not to hang down towards this end too much um, other than to just kind of mix people up so that they, again, don't necessarily know exactly where I am all the time. So um, if you get a couple of kills, don't just sit in one place. Um, but your home base on this mid map is this end fuselage and that first piece. Um, I would recommend taking this location if you've unlocked something like a sentry gun or you've got maybe a, a proxy mine to help you out you kind of do need two people to help you defend this position um but especially if you do have a sentry gun um getting it up in the position where i placed it uh, from what i have found is the best place to put it even if it doesn't necessarily get a ton of kills what it will do by virtue of just being there is it will discourage people from pushing directly up that side of your location so it will push them to these far ends where i'm patrolling right now or the uh, or the, the slope on this side. So a sentry gun can really help you essentially be a two-man squad in free for all holding down this this top area and uh, and that can be that can be quite powerful. but again, mid map is is gonna be where everyone's heading. so it can be a great place to get a lot of kills if you can control your engagement. So um, I'm letting my sentry gun kind of do a lot of the work right now and I'm you know, using footsteps and radar as best I can to try and, and and be in this dangerous area. But you'll notice even throughout this clip, the places where I got closest to dying were when I was on the far side of the satellite there. Um, when I'm up here, closer to the fuselage, you'll see that my engagements tend to be a lot less dangerous for me because people, again, are pushing up to that end. So um, I, I wouldn't recommend spending a whole lot of time over where that guy just died. I would instead recommend spending time where I just killed him from. These last three maps are newer additions. I don't have a whole lot of content from them, so I'm just doing one clip for each, and I don't necessarily uh, have a, a really solid defensible area for you, so I'm just going to show you a couple of streaks, uh, well, one streak from each map that I got on um, to give you an idea. Nuketown, not really a defensible area in Nuketown. Whatever end of the map, of the two ends of the map that you spawn on, um, you know, your best bet is just to try and use cover and defend the area where you are. Um, Maybe get out to the Jeep in the middle of the street, uh, but other than that, Nuketown's going to be a bit of a cluster. Um, and again, I, I haven't broken it down super hard. Um, in Raid, this is my favorite location by far. Um, using this big planter, the room up above you nearby, as well as moving 
um, to the left through that garden, uh, staying kind of in the back corner of the map, is is the strong. In the few games that I've played, free for all on raid is the strongest thing. So moving through here, people spawning through there, and then moving through that back uh, walled garden, if you will, um, is is a very good position to patrol. Again, this room and the room opposing it with the big windows. People will sometimes sit up there because it feels like that room is a good position. Um, do not stay in there. You may use it <laughs> to get lines of sight to other places on the map. Uh, but but it is uh, one of those death traps where people will just basically sink grenades in on you. So um, in this clip, I'm I'm kind of heavily, you know, sitting uh, in this corner with this with this big uh, concrete cover, which is an excellent position to use. Um, but I also, in this map, move a lot through that back corner where these people are coming from. That can be a good way to change your angle, especially if people start kind of coming back looking for you. So um, and, and you can even tell in some of these clips, even if I don't get to move through here, um, I'm thinking of moving, and the only thing that will kind of hold me up or, or pull me back is people spawning and engaging other people. So um, that is not necessarily a great position for a sentry gun. I would probably have placed it further back now, but... Um, that is the area on raid that I have I have used to some success, uh, and pines is kind of um, a bit of a uh, work in progress for me. So this is one I I would actually enjoy spending more time on um, because there are definitely some hints of some excellent defensible areas on this map, and uh, I believe the location that I'm at right now. Yes, this location is, is probably my favorite so far. But again, I want to spend some more time with this map to find locations. So uh, on these newer maps, if any of you guys have, have your own suggestions about good defensible positions, um, let me know as I, as I play more free-for-all and get more clips for these maps. Uh, we'll probably follow up with uh, defensible areas for the newer maps. Obviously, I've spent more time on the launch maps than the, than the you know, uh, season one maps. So... Um, this upstairs uh, escalator and corner uh, is a good place to patrol. Again, for similar reasons, lots of cover, uh, the ability to control engagement direction. Um, using this kind of corner where I just was, uh, those the, the fast food, the food court, if you will, is, uh, is a good thing to kind of think of as your home base and to move out from there. Um, that way, as you kind of stretch out, get a couple of kills, you know where to kind of like pull back to as people start to push. Um, there, I kind of third party and saved me a little bit um <clears throat> so there's there's high ground here looking over although i wouldn't spend a whole lot of time looking over the edges that will um, tend to be where people are looking um, i would tend to patrol the food court and let people come to you more often um, above that galaxy room sign people can be standing up there and look across at you so you have to not just be aware of down low but up high and that kind of um uncertainty about where you should be looking can make uh, it easier for someone to get the jump on you so if they're down low and you're looking up high they can they can start shooting at you because you're going to be on top of that on that wall um, so that's why I say I wouldn't spend a lot of time looking out uh, over the ledges over the escalators and stuff like that because it will make it so that people know where that's where people tend to stick their heads a lot whenever I'm down there that's where I'm aiming because I know that's where people are going to be looking so Whenever there's a place that I'm like, I'm going to look up there because oh someone's probably there, I try to avoid it when I'm in that area. So, um, fruit for all, people are going to be trying to move around, you know, to a decent extent. You may get one or two people whose, whose game is to snipe a single area, and you may not kill those people much, but you will kill everyone else in the game pretty regularly. So, I would recommend more of a, uh, you know, an infantry level engagement, letting people come to you as opposed to trying to create some sort of uh, sniper position where you can pick people off from a distance. Free for all, you will be more effective in free for all. Engaging in these up close battles, but doing so in a way that gives you the advantage. I mean, over here, I'm patrolling this corner, but when people come to me, I know pretty much where they're coming from with footsteps and such. So, well, minions, I hope that that was uh, useful, and I hope you got some value out of that. Uh, if you did like that video. If you didn't like it, dislike it, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you liked or didn't like so that I can make things better in the future. Um, if you're not subscribed, you're not a minion. So I hate to exclude you from the group, but all you got to do is click subscribe and suddenly you're a minion. And then I get to say hello minions and you get to be like, that's me. So um, I'm going to try and do, uh, 
I'm definitely gonna be doing more produced stuff like this, so make sure you guys stick around if you wanna see more stuff like this. Um, and I will talk to you guys later. See ya.